I thank you. We now go to Mr. Gowdy. Professor Gruber, uh, what did you mean when you said they proposed it and that passed because the American people are too stupid to understand the difference? When I said that, I was at an academic conference being glib and, quite frankly, trying to make myself, make myself seem smart by insulting others. Are you offering the venue as a defense uh, for, uh, for saying it or for meaning it? I'm offering it as a defense for using inappropriate and hurtful and excusable language to explain. Well, what did you mean by too stupid to understand the difference? Congressman, I didn't mean anything about it by it. Well, you said it. You had to have meant it. I was once again being glib and trying to make myself seem smarter by reflecting. Well, what other. did you mean when you said it was a very basic exploitation of the lack of economic understanding of the American voter? What did you mean by that? Once again, it's another example of my inexcusable arrogance in trying to insult others to make myself seem smarter. Well, what did you mean when you said the American people don't care about the uninsured? Once again, that was an overstatement of trying to conjecture on political topics in which I'm not an expert. Well, you know what, uh, Professor Gruber, I have listened to you all morning talk about your lack of political acumen and that you're not a politician, uh, so therefore you don't know not to call people stupid. Most of the people watching this morning aren't politicians and they don't call people stupid. And I can't help but note, uh, Professor Gruber, and another one of your quotes, which I'll read to you, that was politically infeasible. You remember saying that? Yes. So you do like to factor in the politics from time to time, don't you? And also happen to note, Professor Gruber, that usually you insult the American voter, not the American public. So you do factor in politics, don't you? I have tried a number of occasions, pretended that I know more about politics. Do you think do. not being a politician is a defense? And is that your defense this morning? I mean, I know initially you said that you offered these comments at a conference. I think you meant conferences, plural, but you said conference when you went on a very obscure television show and initially apologized for what you said were inappropriate comments. And now today your defense is that you're not a politician. Is that the best you can come up with? The best I come up with is to really just apologize for an inexcusable. Well, but I want to know, I mean, the pervasiveness of your quotes is so much that it has to be more than that. It has to be more than just an episodic mistake that you made. Well, here, let me keep going, see, see if this helps you any. Um, what did you mean when you said you wish that you had been able to be transparent, but you'd rather have the law than not? Once again, it was my trying to conjecture about a political process in which I'm not an expert. Well, what, what did you mean when you said it was written in a tortured way to make sure the CBO didn't score the mandate as a tax? Once again, it was using inappropriate language to try to sound impressive about something to my colleagues. You see a trend developing here, Professor Gruber? I don't understand the question. Uh, it's a lot of stupid quotes you've made. That's the trend. A lot of you see them? inexcusable quotes. Yeah. Right. And, and again, your defense is that you're not a politician. The lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. Well, what is a non-politician doing talking about political advantages? A non-politician is talking about political advantages to try to make himself seem smarter by conjecturing about something he doesn't really know. So about. you're a professor at MIT and you're worried about not looking smart enough? Yes. Okay. Well, you succeeded if that was your goal. Now, I want to ask you, are you sorry? When did you realize that these comments were inappropriate? Because it took you about a year to apologize, so I'm trying to figure out if you realized sooner that they were inappropriate, or, or was it just the morning before you went on M MSNBC that you realized that it was inappropriate? When did you realize that these comments are indefensible and inappropriate? I, I honestly didn't remember making them. You didn't remember calling your fellow citizens stupid, and, and you didn't remember saying that you're the only person who cares about the uninsured, that the rest of your fellow citizens don't give a damn about the uninsured? You don't remember saying that? I don't, because they were really glib and thoughtless comments that I made. Well, Prof 
Professor Gruber, let me just tell you what it looks like from this vantage point, um, is that you thought that they were really pithy and really funny until the video showed up. And then even then, it took you a little while to, to apologize. And, and what I'm struggling with is whether your apology is because you said it or because you meant it. Which are you apologizing for, because you said it or because you meant it? I, I didn't mean it. I'm apologizing. All of these quotes that I just read to you, you didn't mean a single one of them. Not a one. What I, what I said, Congressman, is that I was using glib, thoughtless, and really inexcusable language. You, well, you used them a lot. You used them a lot, Professor Gruber, which tends to undercut the notion that you were sorry for an episodic misstatement. I just read to you about 10. You see why people might possibly think the apology is a little disingenuous? Maybe. I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Oh, if the gentleman yield me just 10 seconds. Following up on Mr. Mr. Gowdy, when you made these repeated comments, these glib, inappropriate comments in an intellectual community with lots of other like-minded people, did anybody come up to you and tell you that what you were saying was inappropriate? Um, not that I can recall, no. I guess what you said was popular in that community. 